Hello. The topic for today's presentation is Java input output streams. By the end of it, you should know what a stream is, the different types of streams and classes that are available in Java to write the different types of data, and also the process of serialization and how you can mark your Java classes so that the instances of these classes can be serialized. A stream is a logical handle to an input source from which you can read data or to an output source to which you can write data. For example, while you are watching this video, this very moment, YouTube is uh, using the network stream to write the video data back to your browser, which in turn is using the same network stream as an input stream to read from it and play the video back to you. Similarly, when you copy files from one folder to another folder on your machine, the operating system uses the file system as a handle pointing to the two different locations. The byte streams in Java, the classes in the byte streams allow you to read and write one byte at a time. It could be a file or it could be a network location, but using the classes under byte streams, you will be able to read and write one byte at a time. The character streams, on the other hand, the classes under character streams like file reader, file writer, they read one character at a time and in Java characters are represented using any code which uses two bytes so that any character in any language in this world can be easily represented using a Java character and that's the reason you should be using the classes in the character streams to read and write, write data within your application so that it can be easily internationalized. But it's still important that you understand the various classes and methods in the byte streams uh, because underneath the covers, these are the classes and methods used by every other stream. The byte stream classes are the classes which does the actual functionality beneath the covers. The buffer streams are wrapper classes. They wrap the byte streams and uh, character streams and they provide a functionality of not going to the operating system every time. So every time you read data using the byte streams and character streams, instead of asking the operating system to read one byte or one character at a time, the buffered streams will read a lot of data and they will improve the performance. And when we do the hands-on in the next session, you will see how exactly we can wrap the character and uh, byte streams using a buffered stream to read more data. Before we move on to object streams, you should understand the process of serialization. Serialization is the process which allows you to write any object to a stream. It could be a file or it could be a network as I have just mentioned. So you can write an object to a stream using the process of serialization. And to do that, you have to mark your class as serializable. So your class that you want to write onto a network or a file should be implementing the serializable interface. For example, if you use RMI, the uh, remote method invocation, Java RMI, or even when you use EJBs, Enterprise Java Beans, or JMS, Java Messaging Services, and if you are exchanging objects between two different applications, then beneath the covers, the serialization and deserialization is already happening. And uh, your JMS provider or the EJB container is using the classes from object streams to do that. So once you mark your class as serializable, it should implement serializable. Serializable is a marker interface. It doesn't have any methods. It just tells the JVM that the instances of this class can be serialized. And once you do that, your EJB container or your JMS provider can serialize them on one end of the network and on the other side they can deserialize them back and handle it over to the appropriate Java classes or Java methods to do whatever they have to do. So these are the important streams in the Java IO package which we regularly use. To summarize, you now know that stream is a logical handle to an input source from which you can read data or an output source from to which you can write data this could be a file system or it could be a network or it could be any other thing where from where you can read data or to which you can write data the byte streams in java allow you to read one byte at a time whereas the character streams use the unicode character so you are right, reading two bytes at a time 
and you should be using the character streams because your application can be easily internationalized as it represents any character in any language. And the buffered streams are the wrapper classes and uh, they improve performance and we'll see how the buffer streams and the byte streams and character streams works when I do a hands-on in the next session. Serialization is the process of writing your Java objects onto a stream and beneath the covers this is being used already by the EJB containers or JMS providers to write read and write objects and for your objects to be serializable you have to mark your classes. Your classes have to implement the marker interface called serializable and once you do that the JMS provider or the EJB container can serialize and deserialize your classes. In the next session we will be seeing the byte streams and the character streams and in action so you will know how to read and write to files using the classes from these two streams. Until then keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.